Surah Al-Hijr is the 15th surah of the Quran. It consists of 99 ayat and is a Meccan surah. It was revealed shortly after Surah Yusuf, which you heard a few days ago about. And it was revealed at the time that Prophet ﷺ and the early community of believers were facing great challenges and were being persecuted severely. It is believed this, uh, this surah was revealed just after or in between the year of sorrow in which the Prophet's uncle Abu Talib, his protector, passed away and his beloved wife Khadija alayhi salam. And I think today is the commemorates the anniversary of her death, by the way. Allahu Alam. So this surah is revealed in between the year of sorrow and the year of the hijrah, somewhere in between these two. It uh, focuses on giving the Messenger وسلم, words of comfort and words of support during this difficult time. Him and his community of followers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reassures the Prophet وسلم, that he will triumph, he will prevail eventually. And that on this journey of da'wah, on this mission of his, he needs to be patient and he needs to endure him and the believers all the challenges and difficulties that come their way. So this is the theme of the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that in the same way that previous messengers suffered and were eventually victorious or triumphant, you also will be victorious and triumphant. It's a case of being patient. It's a case of enduring these difficulties in a, in a manner that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These were tough times. The surah is named after Al-Hijr. Now, Al-Hijr is a rocky plain that lies in between Medina and the Sham. The people of Quraysh knew this area and they were familiar with it. They were familiar with this name. And that's because they, they would uh, pass by it on their journeys, on their route, their trade routes towards the Sham on the way back. So they knew this area. And the surah is named Surah Al-Hijr after the people who occupied this area, who are the people of Thamud, who are the people of Prophet Saleh alayhi salam. Now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning in the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the surah with a warning to the people of Quraysh that, listen, if you continue the way you are, if you continue to disbelieve, and not just disbelieve, but hinder the Messenger وسلم, from conveying this message, you will meet the same fate that the people of Thamud, the people of Al-Hijr faced, in other words. And not just that, but I will protect the Prophet وسلم, and he will be victorious the way that I have protected the Qur'an. And this is the surah in which the ayah, inna nahnu nazzilna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun, is mentioned. We reveal the dhikr, the reminder, and we will be protectors of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the surah mentions how he protects the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> in the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected these, these entities or these, these, these creations of his, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also protect the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not just that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling uh, the people of uh, Quraysh that, you know, these guys, the guys who occupied, uh, who, who lived in this area, were cave dwellers, they were tough people, they were tougher than you. And not just that, they thought that these caves would protect them from Allah's wrath and anger when it comes. And of course it didn't, and they were destroyed. So don't think you're too strong, and that you're beyond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, can destroy you, ish, should he will for that to happen. And therefore, rest assured messenger, and rest assured believers, and this is of course a message to us as well, that... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, go out there and convey this message confidently. Uh, con preach this message and we will protect you. This is the surah of protection. Uh, in the same way you said Allah preserves and protects the Quran and other entities. So that's a gist of what the surah is about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is commanding the believers commanding the Messenger وسلم, to go out there and convey the message. He assures them of his protection. He warns the disbelievers that they will meet the same fate as the people of Hijr if they do not uh, listen or submit to this message and if they do not submit to the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa 
And if they continue to hinder and, and, and obstruct the Messenger Messenger from spreading the message, Prophet of course, at this time when this surah was revealed, was hiding. Him and the early small community of believers were hiding, you know, in Dar al Arqam, the house of al Arqam, and so on. And yet, the here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the Messenger to go out there. Sallallahu go out there and preach the message, convey this message, propagate this message, talk to people about this message. And the surah begins with a warning and to the disbelievers. It ends with consolation and words of comfort and support to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In between these two ends, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, there are a number of themes. Allah Jalla Wa Ala talks about a number of things. He mentions previous prophets, as I said, so Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi Salam and Lut, whose stories are always sort of joined at the hip. The story of the people of Ad, Shu'ib's people, in other words, Alayhi Salam, and the people of Thamud, Salih's people, in other words. Uh, these are, this is one set of stories, previous prophets. The other one is the story of Iblis and his, uh, his uh, animosity, his hatred of Adam Alayhi Salam and his progeny. And the reason, Wallahu Alam, that this story is mentioned is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say to the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, this is not personal. They don't hate you because of you. They hate you because of the message that you are trying to spread, that you are trying to deliver. So don't take it personally, in other words. And that's why in a certain ayat in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't be upset. It may upset you what they're saying, but they're not you know, saying this about you necessarily. They're saying this about the message that you are delivering. And finally, the surah is the surah of protection. Protection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the Quran, preserves it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the heavens and the earth, among other things. Uh, it also contains advice, advice to the Prophet to be patient, advice to the community of believers to be patient and endure things patiently, advice to them to do tasbih and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also it contains advice to avoid to, to avoid the company, to sort of shun uh, the uh, jahileen or the disbelievers. So that's sort of a gist. It begins, of course, with Alif Lam Ra. And scholars differ greatly. The Mufassirun differ greatly as to what these letters mean. I'm going to give you a few um, uh, explanations that have been offered. There are at least two dozen that I'm, I've come across, at least two dozen. And there are probably many, many more. So the most popular one is to say Alif Lam Ra. These are letters that the of the Arabic language. Quraysh were familiar with the Arabic language. Quraysh prided themselves in their linguistic abilities, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala had challenged them. Look, produce something like this. Alif Lam Ra are letters. This surah, these this Quran consists of these letters. Why is it then that you can't produce something like this, something that equals it? What's preventing you? So that's one explanation. This was uh, to show the miraculous nature of the Quran, that the ijaz of the Quran, that you, even though this Quran consists of letters, that you are familiar, that you know letters of the Arabic language, and you pride yourself in your poetry and the linguistic abilities, and yet you cannot produce a surah or even a set of ayat similar to this. That's one explanation. Another explanation is to say that Alif, Lam, Ra, three letters, signifies three themes. And of course, there are attempts to say, okay, the three themes in this Quran are Allah's protection, uh, the surah, rather, Allah's protection, the stories of the prophets, and then advice to the believers. That's one attempt. There are other attempts, of course. So Alif, Lam, Ra, these three signify three themes. Wallahu alam. Another explanation that I quite like is to say that Alif, Lam, Ra is almost like the alphabet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling <clears throat> the believers and those who are listening to the surah that look, we're going to press the reset button and start anew. We're going to start fresh again. We're going to start with the very basics and we're going to remind you of those very basics and those essentials, in other words. Allahu alam. This is one expression. Alif lam ra is like a kid going to an infant school to, a children, to, to, to learn the alphabet for the first time. In the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pressing the reset button and saying, we're going to teach you all of this stuff and the essentials that you need to know, we're going to remind you of them. <clears throat> uh, another explanation is Alif Lam Ra uh, signifies the number of stories mentioned in this. So there are three stories mentioned in this, uh, three stories of the prophets mentioned in this surah, story of Ibrahim and Lut alayhi together, the story of Ad and the story of Thamud. This is one explanation that 
sounds interesting. And the reason why it's interesting is because if you are to compare it to, say, uh, Surah Maryam, Kaf Ha'ayin Sad, that contains five five prophets. And you're going to come across this in a few this time. This, Wallahu Ta'ala Alam, is, is all I have to say at this moment. Barakallahu feekum, subhanakallahu wa bihamdika, shadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.